Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the State of GraphJS talk. Um, well, I'm Veronica Andreo, and I'm here on behalf of the whole Grass community to show you like the latest updates uh, within the GraphJS project. <clears throat> um, a little bit about me, I'm temporarily uh, working as a visiting scholar at the Center for Geospatial Analytics at the, in the North Carolina State University. Um, my background is in biology, and then I studied a bit of remote sensing and GIS and went into some programming, very basic. Um, I work in Argentina as a researcher and a lecturer in the space agency. Uh, I'm part of the grass development team, and now for the last three years, I'm serving as a PSC chair, and I'm also a charter member, uh, OSTEO charter member. Uh, well, a little overview of what the talk will be today. We will cover different aspects of the whole project, not only code and uh, new features. So, you know that GRASS has been around for something like 41 years, but uh, we still get the question, like, what is that? <laughs> or, are you still alive, guys? <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> here we are. Um, and you will see that uh, we are, or you can use grass in different ways, or the answer to this question can be very different according to how you use grass. Um, so, you can see that it is a geek open source command line GIS, if you want. Um, but it can also be an open source desktop GIS. By the way, the graphical user interface has been really uh, improved in the last years, let's say five years. So if you haven't opened Grass lately, this is how it looks now. <clears throat> It can also be used as a processing backend in QGIS. So many people said, ah, you are the QGIS plugin. No, guys. <laughs> you can use GRASS within QGIS, but it is still GRASS. You can also use it within uh, R notebooks or Python notebooks for your workflows, for your scripts as a geo-visualization and data analytics tool. It's a geoprocessing engine running in HPC environments as well. A geospatial platform for developing models because there are a lot of functionality, so it can also be used as a library for new algorithms and new models. And it is also a cloud geoprocessing backend in Actinia, another OSGO community project. So yes, we are all of that, and your answer or the answer will depend on how you use it. Um, so it's as versatile as many people using it. Um, <clears throat> so in the last year, regarding releases, uh, we just released the first release candidate for 8.4 during the Prague community meeting a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we released 8.3.2 in March, and we did a last legacy release for, seven, for the 7 uh, series just to support some production systems. And anyway, daily, there are builds for the preview version that will be 8.5. <clears throat> so, what are the new, new features in GRASS 8? There's more machine learning in GRASS GIS, thanks to Maris <laughs> there. So, there are new modules for um, supervised classification with support vector machines, training and predicting. More topology in GRASS GIS, you know, uh, the vector format within GRASS GIS is topological and there are more new tools for topology, for filling holes in this case. Um, a lot of C tools are getting a JSON output format uh, in order to streamline the connection with uh, 
with uh, the connection of GRASS and other, other software tools within uh, data science workflows. And there will be more coming in the upcoming months with a Google Summer of Code student working on it. Um, some tools, some very unique tools got uh, revamped, like they got a lot of attention lately, like R Horizon, for example. And this was funded uh, by an by NSF award granted to a company in the US that they use this module a lot, so. <clears throat> then there were like uh, different API and library changes in the two um, Python, Grass Python packages. Uh, so we greatly simplified the creation of new projects in Python uh, without, the, without a running session. So we removed this chicken and egg problem. So you just start a Jupyter notebook, create a, a Grass project and start the session there. <clears throat> and there are also improvements uh, within the Grass Jupyter Python packages, uh, new classes for creating animations of lists of rasters and vector maps, and the integration of IPy Live Dead as well. And there's another student I will tell you later uh, with, within Google Summer of Code uh, that will do more improvements in this uh, in this uh, package. Um, Within the graphical user interface, we have a new history browser panel that uh, shows you all the commands that you have run from the, from the graphical user interface and the status. So if they were successful or if they fail and so on, and double clicking there, you can just run it again or change the, the options and so on. You can also have a look at the computational region that was, uh, uh, set at that moment of running the command, and so you can set it again like that. Um, this was done by this was done by Linda Karlovska with a GrassJS student grant. I will tell you a bit more about that uh, later. And finally, <laughs> this might seem trivial, but for us uh, it took a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, locations became projects. So we, no lo we will no longer speak about locations, which was a term that didn't make much sense. Um, but to be in line with other software packages, we are now calling uh, location, locations projects. So everything facing the user now, instead of using this location parameter or option, will show a project. <clears throat> There are also like different new extensions contributed by the community. So a new parallel algorithm for flow accumulation, new algorithms for uh, data fusion, uh, new modules for training and predicting species distribution modeling like Maxent, uh, and many different plotting tools and tools to uh, streamline access to different types of data. I will also show you a bit more uh, in the next slides. We have been investing a lot of efforts uh, in code quality and security to assure that our code base is in good shape. Um, in the different uh, APIs, let's say, so for C and C++, but also for Python, which is formatted with black, uh, flake eight, and we have more or less fixed three quarters of all the, the detected issues. Uh, PyLint is also partially enabled. And for code security, we have uh, integrated Bandit for Python vulnerabilities, CodeQL for C and C++ and Coherity. Um, this was also funded by uh, NSF. Regarding distribution, we are, uh, we are also working on that. So we are working a lot on sustainability of GrassJS. So we wanted to keep, uh, keep it alive for at least 41 years more. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so we are getting ready to the transition to CMake based compilation and we have done advancements toward compliance with the file system uh, hierarchy standard. And there's a GraphJS Conda package on the way, hopefully um, by the end of this year. Uh, regarding mentoring, um, GraphJS runs a student grant uh, program to contribute to the software and last year there has been uh, one student, uh, so she implemented this history browser panel as I showed you before. And the call is open, it's like an open window, but if you have an idea that you want to develop, we will start like on the fall this year. But the call is open. If you have ideas, just talk to me after on the coffee break or whenever you see me. Uh, and we are also running a mentoring program um, to help people that want to integrate GRASS within their workflows. And so far there has been 11 people working on different topics. Um, there is also like, it is, the call is open uh, so just talk to me and I can share the link uh, to subscribe. Uh, we also this year have uh, originally four students, but then there was one with a visa, US visa issue problems. Um, so we ended up with three. Um, there's a student working on adding EODAC support to GRASS.js, so EODAC it's a library to download um, Earth observation data from different providers. And there's now like a first version of the, a new tool in GRASS called i.eodac to download this type of data for, from different providers. Um, another student is working on improving GRASS user experience in Jupyter notebooks. So to show the computational, the computational region in the interactive maps, draw polygons and set a new region from there, query and so on. And uh, last but not least, there's another student adding JSON output to different grass tools in C, um, in line with what I was telling you before to streamline the connection or the usage of grass together with other software paths packages in, in different workflows. Uh, well, community, there you are, Ivan. <laughs> um, at community growth, we have two new contributors with great access, Edward and, and Linda. Um, Edward immediately became a maintainer, so <laughs> if you are subscribed to Grass um, commits, <laughs> you get tons of emails from him. And last but, last but not least, there are three new grass babies in the last, that were born in the last six months. So <laughs> that's a way of growing the community too. <clears throat> and we had our community meeting a couple of weeks ago in Prague. So we are uh, really thankful and grateful to our sponsors and individuals and anonymous contributors uh, that made this meeting possible. We worked a lot during that week, so we released the first release candidate. There were more tools getting parallelization with OpenMP, um, new like extensive improvements and testing for upcoming modules like support for stack uh, within GRASS and point pattern analysis tools. We did a call with Niall Dawson from QGIS project and we were doing like bug fixing online during the call. So it was really productive. It was really good. Um, we also integrated the grass, uh, the GDAL grass plugin in the R grass package to read directly from your grass database. So it's much, much faster. Um, we worked on the conversion of manual pages to Markdown, a lot of CI improvements. Uh, we also got Nix distribution <laughs> merged, uh, new tutorials, so yeah, you can have a look. It was really productive meeting and really fun also, of course. Um, we will have elections, uh, PSC elections. 
uh, by mid-October, so get your IDs ready to vote. Uh, we also worked on formalizing our project mission and roadmap and different other procedures. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have this since uh, last September. Um, North Carolina State uh, Group got an NSF uh, grant, um, but this grant is only to work on sustainability of the project, so to enhance the infrastructure, to reviews, re revise sorry, contribution guidelines, support community building, um, but it does not fund implementation of new features, development, or daily maintenance. Um, so for that things, of course, we uh, also need uh, your help, like everyone's help, uh, and we have set different funding options in Open Collective. So donations, uh, it's like a one-time donation, and you can uh, donate whatever you want, and there are supporter levels starting at $10 per month or something. Importantly, this just helps us to keep keep going our, grant, our student grant pro, uh, program, the mentoring program, and, and that kind of things, and of course, meeting uh, in person. So get involved. All contributions are welcome. Code and documentation, of course. Um, through GitHub, we have a new um, template. If you want to transform your workflow into a grass module, there's a new cookie cutter template that it, it makes it super easy. And we also have like a new style guide that you can follow. If you, want, if you don't feel comfortable with code, you can also do translations. We are in Weblate. Uh, it's super easy and we directly get pull requests from Weblate. Um, you can also contribute your use cases and tutorials. If you have a nice use case you want to show off, please talk to me um, after the, the talk and I can help you. We are very interested in hearing how you use Grass. And of course, well, sponsoring, as I mentioned before. Get in touch with us, please. <laughs> um, um, yes, so in the end I made it in 15 minutes. <laughs> Good, thank you. I do not have the stickers because Lufthansa lost my luggage. <laughs> but still, please ask questions. <laughs> Thanks, Veronica. That was amazing. And uh, really see uh, that uh, grass community and uh, the product is very alive. So that question has been answered. So uh, for the audience, any questions here? And I'll ask a, a first question. Um, I've seen uh, the um, Jupyter uh, support is, uh, is improving and uh, also uh, that Grass will be available in Conda. So this opens a lot of opportunities of further integrating Grass and uh, linking it to other uh, software. So can, can you give a bit more uh, what's coming up there? Um. Hola. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so within this uh, NSF grant, um, we are doing all these sustainability um, activities, let's say, and the Conda package and the CMake compilation are within those activities. So um, Michael Barton is uh, from US, is in charge of this uh, Conda package, and hopefully it will be there for the, by the end of the year. Um, and as you said, yes, it will be open like a lot of possibilities because we get this feedback that uh, Grass is like super heavy to install and so on, or, or sometimes in Windows it, it's difficult, but a Conda package uh, would make it so much easier to install everything from the same site and get like the right Python version <laughs> and all that. So yeah, th that's our idea somehow to facilitate the installation and then the usage 
uh, with other software, as, of course. That's really, really great. And that also, uh, QGI is also available in, uh, in Conda. If we run it now in a Conda environment, Grass is not there. Yes. So with this, yes. uh, we would also have access yeah. on all, all the platforms uh, to, yeah, to the so Grass. Yeah, so we are trying to catch up. <laughs> great. Any more questions from the audience, please? The stickers will come because Lufthansa found my luggage. <laughs> if not, uh, then we'll close uh, for this uh, speaker. Thank you very much, Veronica. Thank you.